To the left, right? Yep. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So I just got the Runcam HD release version in the mail. This is the one that's for sale on the website now on runcam.com. And it's not the pre-release version. Some people got pre-release versions with their name actually engraved on the side. Uh, I didn't get one of those. Uh, it wasn't in that group of people. But later on I did get the release version. So here it is, and I'm just going to take a look at it and do a little comparison to the Mobius camera and just see what the differences are. The Runcam HD costs $49.99, and the Mobius costs $79.99. So I really like some of the new features on the Runcam. Uh, the Runcam's HD version actually has the lens centered right in the middle. I really like that feature. And the heat sink isn't so evident. Uh, it's right in here with the name run cam on it, so you hardly know the heat sink is even there. Uh, as you see, the Mobius has the heat sink right here, these two things. I always wondered what they were. They look kind of like buttons, but uh, much better design, I think, on the run cam. Uh, the buttons are clearly visible. This nice uh, silver like coating on here makes it easy to see the buttons. And whereas they were kind of dark on the Mobius, but they're easy to see here. They are uh, easy to press, too. I have no trouble pressing them. If you look at the back here, there's really nothing to mention at all. It's just a flat surface. And uh, it may be a little flatter than the Mobius, actually. So here's what the lenses look like on the Mobius, which is on the left, and the run cam, which is on the right. They're both wide-angle lenses. Okay, I've got both cameras turned on now. Testing one, two, three. Okay, both cameras are running at 1080p. You can hear the sound of my voice. Okay, I've got both cameras turned on now. Testing one, two, three. Okay, both cameras are running at 1080p. You can hear the sound of my voice. And what I want you to look at here is basically the field of view. See how wide each lens is. I believe maybe the Runcam HD is a little wider. You can make up your mind. Okay, now, next, let's just test its ability to adjust the light, the wide dynamic range. So I'm going to go over here. And we'll look this direction, then slowly pan around. Coming around. Now I'm going to come towards the sun, right here. Alright, looking directly at the sun. Okay, now coming back around. and going back into the shade. Okay, now let's just do some fast motion. Fast going around like this. Okay, so that's just a preliminary test. I'll be doing some more later. Now the Runcam HD costs about $50, so it's a good buy. And it has a memory card slot back here just like the Mobius but it doesn't come with a memory card for fifty dollars so you have to buy an SD card or a micro SD card to put in there now if you try to turn it on without the memory card here's what happens you'll get a blue light and then it'll start blinking slowly with a yellow light and then because there's no memory card it'll start blinking rapidly and eventually, since there's no memory card and it can't record anything, it'll go ahead and turn itself off automatically. The Runcam HD and the Mobius action cameras both have USB ports on the back and SD card slots. I've found that they both work well with a 16 gigabyte SD card class 10, which is shown on this package right here. In both cases, the SD cards insert upside down into the card slots. So the SD card inserts like this. And 
Now, once the memory card is inserted, you can press the power button for one second and let go. The blue light will come on and it will go to whatever mode it is set in. Right now, we have a solid yellow light, so it's in mode one, which is for recording the default 1080p at 30 frames a second. So, in order to get it to change modes, anytime it's in standby like this, you can press the mode button one time and it'll change modes. Now the blue light is mode 2 and that is for recording in 720p 60 frames a second. If you press the mode again you go into what's actually a red light. I don't know if you can see it right there but the red light is for taking photos. Now the photos are at a higher resolution than the actual video. So the photos are a default of uh, 2304 by 1536 for photo, photo mode. Okay, and if you press the mode button again, it'll go back to mode one. Now there's also a fourth mode where you can plug the cable in the back and that's activated by the cable and you can watch movies on the TV. We'll get into that later. But so now once you're back in mode one, which is probably the one most FBV people will use, uh, to get it recording, all you have to do is press the shutter button one time. And you'll see the light start to blink yellow on and off. And that just means you're recording. Okay, to shut off the power on the camera, all you have to do is press the power button for one second. And then the light will blink three times. And then the camera will shut off. You see the red light blinking? So that was mode 1 recording, 1080p. Say we want to do the 720p just so we could get the 60 frames a second instead of 30 frames. Okay, so again we turn the camera on and then press the mode button after it goes into standby. So now it's in standby. Let's just press the mode button one time and that'll take us to the blue light which is for the 720p. Now recording is the same way. You just Press the shutter button and then it'll start blinking on and off with a blue light indicating that you're recording. Again, to stop it, just press the shutter button once and then power down. Now to take a photo, again we're going to go ahead and press the power button and turn it on. So we want to take photos in mode 3. So let's press the mode button. There's mode 2, which is blue. And there's mode 3, which is red. It's a little hard to see on camera. But now we can press the shutter button to take a picture. Now when you press the shutter button, it'll actually take one picture. Now you can see the red light. Now I'll press the shutter button. And when it went off and on, it took one picture. If the indicator light ever flashes red during video recording, it probably means you have a low battery. No matter what mode you are in, if you press and hold the mode button for 10 seconds, it will format the memory card. So be careful about that. If you hold that button too long, like for 10 seconds or longer, it will start formatting your memory card and you could lose everything you got. But if it is unable to record, uh, you may want to go ahead and format it, format the card. Also, you can't format the card on a Windows XP machine, so according to the manual, or it won't be formatted correctly. So it's best to format it right inside the camera. So if you need to restore the factory defaults, all you have to do is turn the camera on. And then once it's on, Go to this hole right here and push it with something sharp and the factory defaults will be restored. Now like the Mobius, the Runcam HD can be used as a flash drive. In other words, you can read this card directly from the computer by connecting the USB cable to your computer. Then you can access all your files. The camera can also be charged by the USB cable from your computer or a 5 volt supply and it can take up to three hours if the battery is totally depleted. When charging the Runcam HD, the green light will stay on solid 
until the camera becomes charged. You can also view videos from the USB by connecting it with the provided TV cable to your TV. The RunCam HD also comes with a mounting tray that you can use to mount your camera and this just simply clips onto the camera. This is not compatible with the Mobius so the Mobius will not fit this mounting tray nor will this camera fit the Mobius tray. Here are the specs for the RunCam HD and you can see here the field of view is 120 photo resolution 3 megapixels, video resolution is 1080p 30 frames per second for full HD 720p 60 frames a second and it has 720p 30 frames a second and for the video files we got MOV for the video and JPEG for the pictures and I think you can change this format at least you will be in the future with the software uh, it has live TV out and TSC or PAL Interface is mini USB as we discussed and uh, the maximum size card you can put in it, SD card, is uh, 64 gig and uh, it can flip the image 180 degree rotation, weight is 41 grams as uh, we shall see on the scale, dimension, these are the dimensions I won't read them off and it's got a 750 milliamp hour LiPo battery runs about 80 minutes when fully charged DC voltage is 5 volts and about half an amp of working current or less the RunCam HD weighs 41 grams or 42 grams roughly the Mobius weighs 41 grams and both of these don't have the lens cap so 41, 42 grams for both of them if I put them both on the scale we get about 82 grams, so about 41 grams a piece. Now here's the provided cable that you could use for putting uh, movies onto your TV screen. This cable here has the video and ground which will go over here to my RCA jack on my TV. Composite video. The other jack you could, you could provide 5 volts to the camera to keep it charged while it's running. Now if you want to charge it while you're recording, it requires about an amp of current minimum. So you will have to provide that one amp of current. So I have the camera turned on now and hooked to my video monitor. And it's aimed over here at the instruction manual. Okay, let's take a look at the video monitor. So here's the video monitor and this is what the camera is seeing. And it's a very crisp video. I'm pretty happy with it. it. looks really good. And this would be a similar method that you would use to hook it up to your FPV vehicle. So here's how we play a movie with the RunCam HD. We just press the mode button three times to go from mode one to mode four, which is the TV mode where you can play around with your videos. So now if you want to play a video, you just hit the shutter button and it starts playing and then to stop the movie you can hit the shutter button again to go on to the next movie you press the mode button and then you can use the shutter to play and pause that one too like that but there is no audio out as I discussed the Mobius also can play movies on your TV I just noticed that uh, so if you go ahead and go to mode 4 I believe it is, so we're on 1 now 2, that's blue 3, that's red 4, still red which is different on the uh, on the run cam that was actually out for mode 4 but it stays red just like mode 3 on the Mobius and then you can go ahead and play your movies the same way Okay, quick example of the video latency on this. I've got the camera aimed straight at the monitor. Now I'm going to run my hand in front of it. And you can see it slowly go down the line as it goes through each of the repeating images. Here we go. Latency test with the Mobius. My hand out of the way it might help. There you go. Latency test with the Mobius. So you can decide which one's fastest. 
So to use it for FPV, you would simply hook this uh, white and black wire up to your video transmitter or video switch. And then the other wire would go to a 5 volt source with about 1 amp of current. And all you would have to do is turn the camera on, start it recording, and go fly. And then you could look through the camera with your video monitor or goggles, plus get the recording. One thing I've noticed about the cable, though, is that you have uh, voltage and ground to energize the camera, and then you have video and ground, but there's no audio that I could tell on the cable at all. So I've drawn a little schematic up here that basically shows the diagram of how the wires go as far as I know. So the red and black wire that you can use to power the camera are on pins 2 and pin 10. This is a 10 pin mini USB right here. I made a little diagram of it. And this is, this is different than most USBs. Most of them only have 5 pins on the mini USB. So this is a little unusual. It has 10. So that is your voltage and ground, red and black. And the audio supposedly comes off pin 8. Now I I haven't tried this yet and I haven't proved it, but that's where it supposedly is. Then you also have over on this side uh, video, which is the white wire, and black, which is another ground. Then they have a wire that basically bridges the ground around to pin 3, which as far as I can tell is the enable for the TV out. When you plug this cable into the Runcam HD, it grounds pin 3 and tells it to start sending TV out uh, right out this wire here, the white wire. So I removed these covers off the cable just to have a look at it. It looks like they have uh, some hot melt right here. And I checked out pin 8 to see if I could put an audio wire on there, but unfortunately pin 8 was cut off. So that means I'll probably have to order some plugs and then try out the audio later. I won't be able to do it in this video but I just wanted to show you that. Just to clarify things, the cable from the Mobius does have audio out right here. Unfortunately, the Mobius cable will not work with the Runcam HD and the reason is there's a different configuration on the USB port plug right here. This only has five pins on it and the wires are different uh, than the Runcam HD which has ten pins and so that's what causes the problem. You cannot use this cable. So this is more of a quick rundown on how to use the Runcam HD and a little bit of review in comparison to the Mobius. I'll get into more detail later, maybe show some video on my quadcopter and my Skywalker so we can see how it performs. And I'll get into probably the software on how to configure it and what you can do with it. So that's all for now. We'll see you on the tube. And don't forget to subscribe or and give me a thumbs up. I love those thumbs up. Helps my ratings. Here,